How the Dragon Met the Mole Rat Once upon a time there lived a dragon named Harry in the mountains. Harry was an ancient and rare dragon. He took great pride in being a dragon and often considered himself superior to other animals because he was big, strong, intelligent, graceful and so on. Because of this, other animals found Harry the dragon too arrogant and avoided talking to him. He just bored them with his talk of superiority. One day Harry the dragon was warming his wings in the sun when he saw a small grey creature crawl out of a little pie of earth. What are you? asked the dragon. What? Who's there? the creature asked. What do you mean who's there? Harry was surprised. It's me, Harry the dragon, the most graceful and magnificent creature in the world. Can't you see that? Are you blind? Actually, yes. I'm a mole rat. We mole rats are blind. Wow, what an unfortunate joke of nature, the dragon said in surprise. I feel sorry for you, buddy. I, on the other hand, have perfect vision. I can spot a mosquito from a mile away. We mole rats don't need that kind of vision. We live underground, digging tunnels. In the darkness of the underworld, eyesight is useless. Ha! Eyesight can never be useless, the dragon retorted. I think you mole rats are the useless ones. Pitiful creatures crawling around underground. You can't even imagine how beautiful the earth is from above, from the height of the dragon's flight. All the landscapes, forests, rivers, mountains, sunsets and sunrises. But what would you know? At first I felt sorry for you, but now I think I even despite you. The mole rat didn't reply. He just shrugged and crawled back into his burrow. Hurry the dragon snorted, turned away and continued warming his wings in the sun. Lost in thoughts about how perfect and unique he was, Harry completely failed to notice a group of dragon hunters sneaking up on him. The grateful beast didn't even have time to move when a thick net fell over his shoulders and loops tightened around his paws. Harry raised his long neck, but they threw lassoes over it from both sides, pinning his head to the ground. The hunters swarmed over him, tying him up. The dragon tried to struggle and resist, but it was no use, there were too many of them. Got you, snake, hissed one of them in a vile voice. You missed the ambush. Oh, the money we'll make of you, you fool. We'll sell your horns to the wizards, added another hunter. The skin will go to auction. Close to the witches, teeth to the jeweler for necklaces, and the guts to the shamans for their rituals. And as for the meat, dragons too, anyone? Wait a minute, said the third hunter. I've heard that dragons can regrow their horns and claws. New horns in six months, claws in a week. Maybe we shouldn't butcher him all at once, but lock him and sell the parts over time. Interesting idea. We should think about it, agreed the lead hunter. Let's lock him up for now and figure out what's more profitable. Anyone got counting stones? They tightly bound Harry the dragon with the net and ropes, loaded him on a creaky cart and took him to a dungeon. The dungeon was dark as dungeons should be, and dumb and cold. The tied-up dragon shivered, but more from fear than cold. Hey, dragon, came a tiny voice. Who's there? Harry asked, frightened, peering into darkness, but seeing nothing. It's me, the mole rat. I heard them dragging you in here. But how did you get here? Dug my way in, how else? The mole rat chuckled. So, are we going to save your graceful and magnificent hide or what? Yes, yes, please save me. With a loud snuffle, the mole rat crawled up to the dragon. And uh, how are you going to save me? Harry asked nervously. 
We mole rats belong to the order of rodents, said the little creature. So what? So what? Maybe you are the most graceful and magnificent creature in the world, but clearly not the smartest. I'm a rodent. All rodents love to chew. That means I'll chew through all your bindings. It's just nerves. My head's not working. Harry grumbled in defense. There were lots of ropes and the net had small meshes. The mole rat had plenty of work ahead of him. But there were also plenty of time. A whole night. Near the dawn, the little creature finished chewing through the restraints and Harry could finally stretch his legs. What now? Harry asked. Now I'll crawl back into my burrow, replied the mole rat. But you unfortunately won't fit. Your graceful body is too big. So you'll have to fight your way out. But don't worry, you've got the element of surprise on your side. When the hunters come in, they'll expect you to still be lying tied up in the corner. That's when you strike. Can you breathe fire? No, the dragon shook his head. That's soldiers' fairy tales. There are no fire-breathing dragons. Then I hope you're in good physical shape, said the mole rat. Good luck! The little creature waved his paw in farewell, but the dragon didn't see the gesture in the dark, only hearing the rustling as the mole rat crawled back into his burrow. Thank you, Harry called after him. He felt very embarrassed and awkward after everything he had said to the mole rat the day before. When the hunters entered the dungeon in the morning, they were hit by a furious whirlwind. One got a paw to the face and flew to the side. Another was knocked off his feet by a gust of wind from a wing beat. A third was slumped into the wall by a tail swipe. The dragon burst out of the dungeon, skirted the remaining hunters who were too shocked to react, and soared into the sky. Well damn, we should have gutted him right away, he heard a distant voice behind him. Hurry returned to his mountain, settled on the highest snowy peak where no hunter could reach him, and sat there for three whole days. During those three days the dragon thought a lot. And then Harry descended back to his domain and resumed living as he had before. Only now he was no longer the same dragon Harry that everyone knew. He had changed a lot. What do you think Harry the dragon was thinking about during those three days?